So here's the family tree so far. The primordials create a moon, Ra, and a tomb. A moon is part of the primordials, and he creates Ra and a tomb. That's why he's separated from them. In turn, they create Shu and Tefnut, who are related and end up having children together. And those children are Geb and Nut. But Geb and Nut did not just stop there. They had kids of their own. And those kids grew to be some of the most worshipped gods in Egypt. They gave birth to Isis, who was rumored to have the most magical powers of every other god, including those who came before her. And her brother, Osiris, who was married to Isis, then also had great ruling, being considered the king of Egypt or the new king of Egypt. Seth, their third brother, who was not happy with this, killed Osiris. And of course, because he killed Osiris, this didn't leave Isis very happy. But Isis, because of her magical abilities, revived Osiris from the dead. And then they had a kid together called Horus, who in turn had to fight Seth. The reason for this fight was to inherit the kingdom from Osiris, in which Seth killed. Now, there was two types of battles. The first was an argument against Seth and Horus, and they had to present their case to the Enend. The Enend are a series of gods that already existed. Uh, Horus won these battles handedly, but then Seth decided to do battle with him physically. Again, Horus won these battles, but not as easy as you would think, because Seth got the better of Horus and knocked one of his eyes out. And that eye became the moon. His one eye is the sun and his other eye is the moon. And the reason why the moon is dimmed is because Seth knocked his eye. Hail to thee, Horus, strong of wind whose eyes are like the sun and the moon. Thou art the Lord of heaven and earth, the prince of the gods and the protector of the land. Thou art the great falcon, the god of war, whose arrows never misses their mark. Thou art the avenger of thy father, the conqueror of Set and the protector of the king. So let us go back and address these couplings of these four siblings. Seth and his wife Nephthys, and Osiris and his wife Isis. Now, here's something that is obvious about their pairing. Their pairing usually has to do with the similarities of character. For example, Osiris is the god of fertility, and because he was killed, he is known as the king of the return of the dead or the reincarnation of the king. Isis, on the other hand, is the queen of magic and healing. Seth is the god of chaos and the underworld and all things related to that. And his wife is the queen of the morning darkness healing, mummification, and you can see why they would be paired up together. But just because he has this demeanor does not mean that he is not worshipped. In fact, it says, Hail to thee, Seth, the door to the seven stars have been flung open. The shrine of Set is opened in the mansions of skies. Awaken us as you are, mystery-faced God. Homage to the Osiris, 
Lord of eternity, King of gods, whose name are manifold, whose forms are holy, thou being of hidden form in the temples, whose car is holy, thou art the governor of Tatu, and also the mighty one of Sechem, thou art the Lord to whom praises are ascribed in the gnome of Ati, thou art the prince of the divine, food in Anu, thou art the Lord who is commemorated in Mati, the hidden soul. <laughs>